Hey there, travelers. I'm not Laura. I'm Nick, and I'm one of the five hungry travelers. While Laura was in Greenville, South Carolina last month, and you can find that video here, I was actually able to travel to London along with a friend and colleague. Now, Laura and I have traveled to London before, but this was the first time I was able to go um, while we've had our gluten-free and dairy-free lifestyle, and I wanted to use this as an opportunity to see what it would be like to bring the family. I had an opportunity to travel on United's Polaris class. I got to stay in this quirky, charming hotel in Soho, and I had an opportunity to see a bunch of shows on the West End and eat at some amazing restaurants while I was there. So let's hop into it. Full disclosure, I'm normally a Delta frequent flyer. I am a proud million miler and platinum medallion. But due to scheduling and the price, I needed to end up taking the United Polaris class to get over to London this time. You might remember, Laura actually did a video of the brand new United Club in Newark Terminal C. You can see that video here as well. But this time I was gonna get the opportunity to see the Polaris Lounge and to explore all of the different things that came along with that. Now, if you're a United Club member, that does not necessarily mean that you're able to get into the Polaris Lounge. That space is reserved for international business class travelers as well as some transcontinental flights that are also considered Polaris. Just as you walk past the Starbucks right after security, all of a sudden you find the Polaris Lounge and already there's this star theme that starts to emerge. The space is beautiful. It's less bright blue like the other United clubs and more stately brown and gold and wood paneling and marble. As you can see, it was quiet when I was there. My first stop was to go right to the windows and to be able to see the beautiful runway looking out over Newark. I actually went back to the bar after visiting the runway and I was able to see that they had a full service espresso bar. This was a nice upgrade from having to go to like the cappuccino machine where I wouldn't have a lot of control over what kind of dairy they might have used in our beverage. And score! They had almond milk, it was silk, and they were able to make an almond milk cappuccino for me, which was awesome. I then walked through the breakfast buffet. So I did get a dish, as you can see, some turkey sausage and some fresh fruit, which was perfect for me. I was a little disappointed that most of the other options there didn't really work, and even frustrated that like scrambled eggs, they included soy in it. It is worth noting that while Laura and the kids are generally pescatarian, I do eat some meat and some other items that they don't normally eat. So this was my opportunity while I was traveling on my own without them. Breakfast, you may ask? Yes, I was on the United Day Flight. If you're not familiar with the Day Flight, it is an amazing option, particularly if you're working. We were able to fly out of New York in the morning and land in London towards the evening, have a quick dinner, go to bed, and when you wake up the next morning, you are already caught up on UK time. It's so much easier than having to do a red eye and having to sleep on the plane and to be uncomfortable and to be screwed up from a time zone perspective for your entire trip. If you can do it, I recommend it. The bathrooms in this lounge are clean and private. They're single stall only. You can even see going through this hallway, they carry that star motif from outside in the hallway. They bring it in here into the bathroom hallway. It's really nice. Time to board. At my seat, I was greeted by the usual Polaris amenities. A blanket, a gel pillow, a plush regular pillow, and a fantastic amenity kit. Toothbrush and toothpaste, a toiletry kit, with a quartet of creams and hydration tools, a pen, tissues, a cheeky eye mask, and some nice socks. Watch this amazing takeoff. Soon after takeoff, I got a service with warm nuts, and I also ordered a sparkling water with a splash of OJ. That's like our family's favorite. It's like fake soda. It's awesome. And then it was time for breakfast number two, because my first breakfast was already in the lounge. I had some options with what they were serving. An egg, some turkey bacon, some potatoes, but a whole lot of gluten and dairy that I wasn't going to be able to eat given my restrictions. 
Now you might ask, why didn't I just order a special meal? Well, here's something I really need to flag for those of us who are traveling with eating restrictions on United. If you go into their app and into the traveler information, there is a space for special meals. A few days before the flight, I tagged that section for gluten intolerance. But then when I looked on the day of the flight, it was gone. I did it again before my flight back to New York. I tagged myself once more for gluten intolerant, but when I actually got on the flight to go back to New York, it was cleared out and emptied out. This is a real big red flag for those who us those of us who have restrictions like this or who may have some serious allergies, and I do hope that United IT is able to fix that portion of their app. Have you had this same issue using the United app? If you have, please leave a comment down below. I think it's important for this community to start get that word out so that they do change it. Welcome to the Soho Hotel. My room was down this short blue hallway, and then as soon as I opened the door, well, once I got the key to work on the right side and I opened the door, I went inside and I loved this room. It was so perfectly well appointed. The bathroom was nice and clean and felt spacious. It was a nice way to be able to spend a week. Then when I went over around the corner to the closets, it was so much room to hang everything up that I needed. And just the color scheme and the little quirky finishes throughout the room had this perfect combination of luxury and fun. I really enjoyed it and I would totally go back there, both with my kids or even if it were just me and Laura going there on like a date trip. Meals at the Soho Hotel were actually fantastic. As I mentioned, I did a quick dinner at the end of the day flight as I was arriving there, sort of like a 9 p.m. meal. It was the perfect way to finish off that day of travel. And the amazing thing was that both for dinner and for breakfast, their menu was labeled so clearly. Gluten-free items, dairy-free items, vegan items. It really gave me the ability to hone in on what I wanted. And the wait staff was incredible. They asked about allergies every time I ordered, just to be certain. My breakfast, which I had every morning when I was there, was fantastic. It was this super foods bowl with a berry compote and blueberries and strawberries and pineapple. There may have been some mango in it. This like coconut yogurt and these chia crisps. It was almost like crisp bread. And then they also made these fantastic banana rolls, which they rolled in uh, cashew butter. They were absolutely fantastic. Of course, I also got to have a uh, almond milk or oat milk cappuccino along with it. So it was a it was a great morning. One of the things I really love about charming places like the Soho Hotel in London is this honor bar that they have. It gives you a chance to have the last nightcap as you're heading off to bed, and you can just bring it upstairs along with you. The other thing is that, look in here, you've got so many different kinds of tonic waters and lemonades and ginger beers and ginger ales. If you were to do this in the US, you would get like seltzer and like maybe tonic, and that would be the extent of it. They did such a good job giving you so many different options, and that's exactly the kind of things that I like to add to a cocktail. So you write down on a pad all the things you've taken, and then they'll charge your room after the fact. So it's kind of like a mini bar, but there's so many different options, so many more than you would have in a room. And also, it's an honor bar. You could write down everything. And if you don't, it's just your honor in question. Well, I won't tell. So as I said, I saw some amazing shows and had some fantastic meals, but I don't want to put too much into this video. That's going to be for my next video. So be sure to subscribe so you'll be notified as soon as that video comes out and you'll see all the things that I did while I was in London and going around the West End. What I'm going to focus on now is my trip back to New York. So let's head back to Heathrow. I will say there have been a lot of complaints right now about Heathrow and weights and losing bags. Now I admit, I did not check a bag. I realized that that wasn't going to be a, right, a good move given everything that's going on right now. But from a line perspective through security, I was through security in 10 minutes. It was really fantastic, really easy, and I didn't have any issues whatsoever. Now at Heathrow, there's no Polaris Lounge. There is a United Club that does service all of those passengers who do qualify for lounge access before the flight. 
While it's not as nice as Newark's Polaris Lounge, it is still pretty nice as United Clubs go. Here you see my colleague Lauren. She was a sport through the whole week where I was taking videos along the way. Here you'll see some lovely seating areas and an amazing drink station. All kinds of different sodas and fruit waters and different things to add in together. I made an amazing peach nectar and seltzer spritzer thing. It was really good. Now heading over to the buffet, unfortunately you'll see gluten and gluten and gluten. Now, I was able to pull together a number of things pretty similar to what I did in Newark, um, but it still is not a tremendous amount of options for somebody who has a gluten intolerance. Now, as I mentioned, I'm more of a Delta person than a United person, and Delta has recently announced a brand new partnership with a company called Explorer Coffee. Explorer gives you the ability to have cold brew concentrate and to get it through security because it is smaller than the maximum amount of liquids that you can take through security. They're also providing that cold brew concentrate to people who are on select transcontinental routes. So I knew as I have been emailing Delta at every time, every chance that I can, telling them that they need to start providing cold brew on flights, I took advantage of it and I ordered my own Explorer cold brew knowing that I could bring it on this trip and it was great. I add a little bit of plant-based milk of my choice and you get an amazing cold brew whenever you want it while on your airplane travel. Now it was time to head to the gate, which was just a few steps away from the lounge. Again, the app did forget the fact that I had labeled myself as gluten intolerant, but this menu worked a little bit better. The cauliflower salad was workable, and the roasted halibut actually was pretty good considering my intolerances. And the fruit bowl that was served on the second platter was actually a pretty fresh way to finish off the trip. All to say, I am now a United Silver, but I really do wish they would fix the issue in the app. I'd really rather not have to guess whether or not they're going to have a meal that will work for me or not, especially if I'm in the Polaris class. But before then, here's another awesome takeoff video for you. Bye! Rutabaga, rutabaga, rutabaga. Delicious. My room was doing. Doin. How do you say cappuccino? Put that note down in the notes. It's fun. I had an opportunity to try. Blah blah blah.